to the message tonight? Yes. Yes, message going to take a little bit of doing tonight, so I ask you please to pray for me as I preach the message. Our topic is on the screen, and it is caption. What's the caption here, Pastor? Two women. Uh-huh. Which one is yours? I know which one is mine. I know which one is mine. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the law of this land, and I checked it out today, gives us permission to have one wife. Not true? Yes, preacher. Law of this land. One wife. Not three. One. And even though David, the man after God's own heart, had five wives, the Bible gives us permission to have one wife. One. There are some people who trick the system. They have a wife in Guyana and one here in Tortola. Hmm. First, they preach up. Because Guyana is so big, they can have one over the mountain. Hmm. There are some people who have a wife in Jamaica and they have one in Tortola. Hmm. Tell us, preacher. I want you to know that this is bigamy. This is what? Bigamy. The act of entering into a marriage with one person while still legally married to another. Hmm. And bigamy is a crime. Bigamy is what? A crime. And ladies and gentlemen, tonight, I disagree with anyone who says that marriage is evolving in terms of its definition. Yes, preacher. No, man. Marriage is holy. Hmm. Yes, preacher. There's one definition for marriage. A man and a woman. There's no other definition. Yes, preacher. And as I listened to Barack Obama last night, I listened to him. Okay and straight and straight and gay. Oh, that's, that's all that is politics. Mercy, preacher. I'm not into politics. I'm into what the Bible says. Hallelujah. And marriage is holy. And ladies and gentlemen, when you have icons like Oprah Winfrey, that's her name? Oprah Winfrey, trivializing marriage, it shows you how much the devil is involved in trying to redefine marriage. Tell us, preacher. When I asked why she's not married to her partner, Stedman, Oprah Winfrey said, a piece of paper does not define a life. Mercy, preacher. Marriage to her is a tradition, and she does not consider herself a traditional woman. Let me tell her for you, tell her I say, marriage is more than a piece of paper and a tradition. It is a high, holy, and sacred institution created by Almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I speaking the truth? Yes, preacher. Marriage is more than a piece of paper. Hmm. Well, let's go into the message for tonight. Two women. Which one is yours? I know which one is mine. Right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible in many places, stay with me tonight, I gotta take my time. The Bible in many places is written in code or symbols. In what? Code or symbols. Well, that should be codes or symbols. Especially the prophecies that foretell the future. Hmm, yes, preacher. You gotta listen to this. The use of codes and symbols is one of the methods God has chosen to preserve the Bible. Hmm, yes, preacher. For if certain powers which have existed had been aware that the Bible was talking about them, they would have done their best to destroy every trace of the word of the living God. Mercy, preacher. Metaphors and symbolism were powerful words used in Jewish culture. And what these metaphors and symbolism do is that they give deeper concrete meaning to abstract concepts. Hmm. You gotta listen. Now understanding Bible symbolism helps a person to understand the importance of truth. Yes. The importance of what? True. So understanding that the bread of life, the light of the world, the living water, the good shepherd are all talking about Jesus allows the reader to grasp the many facets associated with Jesus Christ. Tell us about the preacher. So he's not just a son of God, he's mm, the yes, son of man. Mm, yes, he's the lily of the valley, he's mm. the bread of life. He's the bright and morning star. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. And so to understand prophecy, it is important that we understand the symbols that are used. Hmm. 
Stay me here tonight. And the symbols used in prophecy are consistent because God is a consistent God. Yes, preacher. God does not use a symbol in one place and then change its meaning in something else. No. No, preacher. God is the same yesterday. God is the same. Today. And God is the same. Tomorrow. And so wine in prophecy means doctrine. While waters in prophecy mean people. Wine means doctrine. Waters mean People. Dragon means Satan and dove means the Holy Ghost. The Bible says here, bring on the screen please. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. Come on everybody. What it says here? And the dragon was wrath with the woman. Now to understand that you have to understand the meaning of the symbols. Dragon means devil. Huh? And woman represents the church. The church. So the devil was vexed with the church. Yes, preacher. Right. Stay with me here today. Tell me Jesus mm. please. Now in, in prophecy there are two different kinds of women. Hmm? Two different kinds of women. Two women. Which one is you? I know which one is mine. Hmm. So we're gonna look at them and you're gonna see mine and you're gonna decide which one is yours. I just saw you, let me tell you again, that God uses a woman to represent the church. A pure virtuous woman represents Christ's true church. Tell us about the preacher. Oh, somebody say amen. Amen. A harlot represents one or more of the many counterfeit churches. Tell us about the preacher. And one church in the Bible, metaphorically, can be a bride or a body or a temple. Woman, the church, represents the people of God. Yes, sir. So the church is not represented by a man. It's represented by a? By a woman. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 16. Come on, everybody, with the reader. What it says here after two. One, two. What it says? And I have put my word in thy mouth. Yes, beautiful. And I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand. Yes, please. That I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. And so say unto Zion, Thou art my what? People. And so Zion here is a term referring to God's people, especially in Old Testament time. Yes, preacher. That's why the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 2, you got to listen. This is the teaching part. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. Yes, woman preacher. represents the church. Hmm. I say woman what? Represents the church. Represents the church. This daughter of Zion is Christ's true church today which is represented by a beautiful and delicate woman to indicate a church of utmost purity. Yes, preacher. And a pure church cannot uphold so homosexuality. Yes, preacher. A pure church cannot uphold adultery and lesbianism and pornography. Are you listening to me? Amen. That's right. Tell us about it. In the New Testament, the church is referred as a virgin, as a what? Virgin. Let's read it, please. Let's read it. For Second Corinthians 11 and verse 2. What it says here? For I am a jealous over you with godly jealousy. Yes, please. For I have exposed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. And notice what it says. Not just virgin, but a, a, a what? Chaste virgin. A chaste virgin, a special virgin. Yes. And notice, it did not say chaste virgins. It said a chaste virgin. virgin. Why? Because Christ has one church. Yes, preacher. Hallelujah. I said, Christ has how many churches? One church. The Bible says in Matthew 16, 18, you have put the thing on the street here. The Bible says, and I say unto thee, that thou art what? Peter. And upon this rock I will bear my church. Notice, it says whose church? My church. It's not the Pope church or the Reverend church or the Bishop church. It is God's church. Amen. Hallelujah. Preach in truth. God said, i my church. Yes, and the reason why the gates of hell cannot prevail against him Hallelujah. is because it is God's church. Amen. Am I speaking the truth here, sir? Tell us about the preacher. There are some folks who are saying that Peter is the rock. Hmm. Mercy. But if Peter is the rock, the Bible is incorrect. Mercy, preacher. Are you listening to me? If Peter is the rock, then the church is dead because Peter is dead. If Peter is the rock, then the gates of hell has prevailed. Peter. But you gotta understand it. To understand it, you gotta go to the Greek. In the Greek, Peter is Petros. Say Petros. Petros. Come on, say Petros. Petros. And Petros is a masculine noun. But rock in the Greek is Petra. 
Mm. And Petra is a feminine noun. Mm, yes. That's why it matches with the church. Because the church is not named after a man. It's named after a woman. Woman represents the church. And Petra in the Greek means a rock with immense proportions. Are you listening to me yes. here? So the church is not one place. The church is everywhere. Hallelujah. Yes, preacher. My friends, you call selling Baptist and evangelical mm. friends call us a cult. Mercy preacher. Had a cousin in Barbados, almost empty a Pentecostal church. The pastor gave DVDs to everybody. Seven day Adventists are called. Cult? You could have called with Halford Brown inside it. No preacher. We're not any cult. We're one of the fastest growing Protestant church on the top side of the hill. Hallelujah. We have hospitals, universities. Are you listening to me here? Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you find us everywhere. You have here, you can't find them nowhere else. But you got Japan, we are there. You got Africa, we are there. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the church is not built on the pastor, the church is built on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say Amen. Yes, God, it's a cut. When I go to college, I argue with those professors in college. Huh? No cut. Every Sabbath we have Sabbath school. Everybody give their opinions. Yes, preacher. Am I speaking the truth? Yes, preacher. And even the pastor talks. Well, pastor, I don't see it that way. Me. This is how I see it. Yes, no preacher. This is an established church, man. Come on, somebody say amen. Hallelujah. And we have schools. I went to the primary school today. And what beautiful children you have there. We have schools in St. Vincent. Dental clinics. Are you listening to me here? Yes, Nursing preacher. homes. I went to Hong Kong. One of the biggest universities. Then... Yeah, Peter. Hallelujah. Amen. This church has one problem. People who call themselves members don't live right. True, preacher. Tell us about it. Is anybody here? And watch it. That's the problem of every other church. Yes, but why it is so akin to us is because of what we preach. Yes, Peter. Tell us about it. When these guys pitch them, they pitch them for one week and shut up. We can do six weeks. Yes. And if I fall down, how the fuck can take over? Is anybody here? And if I fuck can make it, you can get well much. Or you can get Henry Peters. Because in this message, in, in this church, it is not the man. It is the message. Peter cannot be the rock. Which rock? Hmm. Huh? He could be the rock. When Christ needed him, he denied Christ. Hmm. Mercy, preacher. He denied him three times. Rock what? He should have gotten a rock. <laughs> yes. Mercy, preacher. Peter's not the rock. You say, Pastor, who's the rock? Put it. Go, go, go. First Corinthians 7, 4. And, and they all drink the same what? For the drunk from that what? That followed them, and that rock is who? Christ. I said that rock is who? Christ. Hallelujah! Jesus is my deliverer. Every five years we have election. Hmm, yes, and sure. if we don't like him, get rid of him. Get rid of him. You playing pump, what's who do you think you are? Hmm. Is anybody listening to me? Yes, Peter. Peter cannot be the rock. Jesus is the rock. Yes, Peter. And Peter cannot be the rock because the church was, the was in existence before Peter became a disciple. Hmm, yes, Peter. Put it. Put, your, put the thing. Acts 7, 37 and 38. Come on, everybody read what it says here. 
This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, Yes, please. A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. And the Bible says in verse 38, this is he uh -huh. that was in the church in the wilderness. Yes, please. With the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai. Uh -huh. And with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. And the lively oracles here are the Ten Commandments. Yes, Peter. So the church before kept the Ten Commandments. Yes, Peter. And if Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then those of us today must keep it. Hallelujah. Am I talking to anybody? Yes, Peter. Speaking true. Somebody met me in the high way. I don't know who it is. <laughs> hey, you, we're going to show you how to talk to <laughs> Really? I want you to know I got a place to go. <laughs> <laughs> Never string berry someplace. <laughs> <laughs> is anybody here? Yeah. But wheresoever I'm going to preach the truth. Hallelujah. I'm not afraid of anybody. The Lord. You send your guns. You send your thunders. You do what you want. I'm going to preach the truth. Because the Bible says, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall not be And Peter cannot be the rock because he didn't die for me. He didn't know. He didn't what? Die for you. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Acts chapter 20 and verse 20. Watch this. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseer to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Hmm. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on this rock indicates that Jesus intended to create a continuing community against which the gates of hell cannot prevail. Hmm. And so the gates of hell, in its effort in prevailing, have established a church opposite to the chaste virgin. Tell us, preacher. Is anybody? Yes, preacher. And let me tell you something. Understanding that Saturday is the Sabbath and establishing a church that keeps the Sabbath, that does not mean it is the remnant. Hmm. There is a thing called the three angels. Oh, yes. We fear God and give glory to Him. Hmm. For the hour of His judgment is come. Yes, and worship Him that near what? The sea and the fountains of water. And then it says, Babylon is. Yes, Peter. It's fallen. And then the third one says, You must come out of her. Hmm. Yes. Is anybody listening to me? Hallelujah. Let me know. Give me the strength. Now the Bible refers to this, to this church as a whole. Hmm. Not me, the Bible. Mercy. The Bible calls a prostitute. Yes, preacher. Therefore, in prophecy, a pure woman represents the true church, and an impure woman, a prostitute, represents the false church. Hmm. The prophetic book of Revelation highlights both women. Two women. Which one is yours? I know. Which one is mine? Hmm. Yes, preacher. So let's see. Can we dig into Revelation? Yes. Bible says Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. Come on. You are reading so well. What it says here? Woman. Come on, everybody. Revelation 12, 17. And the what? And the dragon was brought with the woman. Yes, please. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Yes, please. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. So it says Christ. that the dragon was vexed with the church <laughs> and went to make war with the what? Remnant. With the remnant. That's why it can't be another church because you keep Sabbath. It mm. must be a remnant. What is a remnant? It's like a boat of cloth. It's like a boat of what? Cloth. The piece that starts it must be the same piece that ends yes, The same Peter. piece that, that ends it must be the same piece that starts it. Mm, yes, Peter. Yes. So if it is blue cloth and you roll out 20, 80, 50 yards, the last piece of the cloth is called a remnant. Mm. It must look the same like the first piece. Yes, Peter. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody talk to me. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that this verse treats Satan as a real enemy. Hmm. Don't mess with him, you eh? No. I tell you, boy, he attacked me last year. Hmm. Every crusade. I'll never forget in Trinidad. I'm there making an appeal, and a demon possessed girl comes and stands right there. You could see the eyes. And then she's coming up the steps, crawling like a snake. And her eyes looking at me. Mercy. And I am standing right here, and the band is behind me. So I can't go forward, I can't go back. Was I scared? Yeah! I'm a human being. And I looked at that girl, and she's looking at me like a snake. When the pastors there saw her, instead of coming to help me, they run to the house. Mercy, <laughs> I looked at her and I prayed. I said, Lord, please, please, Lord, please. And as she's coming to my feet, if she held on to those feet, she would have. 
and she crawled and crawled. When she got to my feet, she crawled away like a snake. They took her that night to my place. I was standing in some place. When I looked, I saw two persons in the pool and, and I ran to the pool and I said, no, 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 you cannot baptize her alone. She still has the demon. Mm. So the two pastors decided to baptize her. When they baptized her, when they went down in the water, thinking they're going to lift her up, she pulled both of them down in the water. And when she came back up, the demon left. You should have seen her the next night. When I called her to come on the stage, you could not believe it was the same person. The devil is attacking people even in the church. Are you listening to me here? I said the devil is attacking people in the church, but the devil is a defeated foe. Do not be afraid of him. Anything he comes your way, you call on Jesus. Because the Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee and every time that Jesus Christ is Do not take his existence for granted. Are you listening to me? Yes. And so he is determined to enter the final battle and win the victory over those who identify themselves as the remnant. Hmm. This being the case, shh, shh, shh. in the final battle between Christ and Satan, the church is on the front line, destroying pastors, family. Mercy. You hear me? I was sitting on a plane with a guy going to, was it Tanzania someplace or guy, and he would not eat. He said he's fasting. So, you know, I, I said, why are you fasting? Because, you know, I don't know if he's something special. He said, I'm a member of the Church of Satan. And we are fasting for the destruction of pastors and their families. Mercy. The devil is attacking. He's bringing this God among leaders. True. Am I speaking the truth? Yes, you shall. Well, I am from Tortola, so I have to be here. No, you shall. 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 No, you No, you No, you shall. No, Let the church roll on. Yes, you shall. Speak the truth. It is not your church. It is not your church. Bible says upon this rock, I will be. Some of you wicked like anything else, and they want to leave the church. Mercy, preacher, mercy, not about it. Is anybody under this sentence? Yes, preacher. Get in the church and involved in politics. Mercy. The church is a church to bring people to Jesus. You have to support a politician. Are you listening to me here? Yes, preacher. Get in the unconverted, influential, and professional people in the church. Size of mission of the church. Mercy. Oh, we don't need evangelism. The church is at the best when it evangelizes. Yes, we can tell us tonight is Wednesday night. If you have gone to Purcell and you find 25, you find plenty. Yes, we can tell us. I'm speaking the truth. Hallelujah. Speak the truth. And you can't tell me I am fear. I preach it against my church and your church too. Because right is right and wrong is wrong. Hmm. But what Revelation makes clear is that Satan is a defeated enemy. Hmm. He's a defeated foe. Come on, you all read it. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10. What it says, and I heard what, Pastor? A low voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And the Bible says in verse 11, put it here. And they overcame him by the what? Blood of the Lamb. Come on, you all said the word of the man. I said they overcame him by the what? The blood of the Lamb. And you all said the thing of the man. And they overcame him by the what? The blood of the Lamb. Not just the blood, and by the word of the earth. testimony. And they locked not their lives unto death. There are people who will stand up with this man. Ah, oh, somebody say. Amen. Amen. I became an adventist, I lost my job. Hmm. <laughs> because the boss man I used to work at the Vincentia newspaper, his name was Metro City. There was this big news on Friday, the newspaper sold out by 10 o'clock. 
I got back to the office by, by 4.30. He wants me to print again. I said, sir, if I print, it goes into my salad. He said, I don't care about salad. I said, print. Mm. I had a decision between God and me. And I went to church that Sabbath. Was, well, was I worried? Yeah. But I've learned one thing in that you're not telling about any business. People like to talk too much. Mm. I'm mm. telling to my God. Come on, somebody say amen. Hallelujah. And I went to church and I sing and I was sad, but I, mm. I praised my God. When I got to work on Monday, he called me in the office. And he took a box of, a box of matches. Poor me, I was so innocent. And took the thing and liked it. Shh. Asked me, what is that? I said, fine. He said, what? <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> but my God never failed me. No, preacher. I said, my God never failed me. Hallelujah. Oh, he never failed me yet. He never failed me yet. My Jesus never failed. We have anointing. Now, shh. because Satan has failed so many times in destroying the church, it may seem angry but cautious. Hmm. He don't just rush in so again. No. And St. Vincent, one Sabbath after the guy came and said, Pastor, I have a devil. So you have a what? Devil. Took him to the best church. Call the elders. The elders say, Pastor, but we never did this, no? They scared like hell. <laughs> I said, that's all right, you stay here, just make sure you ask God to forgive you. And so we gave him the Bible test, and when he read the Bible, it was good. But they were smashing it. Oh, yeah. hmm. One time we were casting out the demon with Pastor Hilton down there, and watch it. We prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, and you don't know where the devil was. The devil was in the woman's head time. <laughs> After we started praying and singing, and I talked him for hours, six hours, the head tie just left the woman's head like some telescope. Hmm. When I gave him the prayer test, as soon as he started praying, he went on his side. I look at his eyes, his eyes started rolling, and I said, hold him, hold him! Because if you don't hold him, they'll hit you. And no devil hitting me. Hmm. And I'm talking about ten elders, and we are in there, and ladies and gentlemen, he, he, he started, and the devil started ripping his eyes and his mouth, and he said, ten of us in here, ten of us in here, we're not coming out. I lifted a Bible, and I, and I put the Bible, he said, no Bible, no Bible, and I made a mistake, look away. He grabbed the Bible and ripped out every leaf. The devil don't like the truth. Mm. We're there for three hours, you know, three hours, and then he said, five came out, five points out. What's your name, what's your name, and he gave all kind of names. And we kept praying. I said, we kept praying. We kept calling on Jesus. Then eventually, he said, oh, just one more left. Mm. One more took us 12. But before he came out, he ripped the guy's eyes. Listen, the guy mouthed them from head to head. It's a scary thing, you know? Because after you finish that, when you go home, you got to sleep. <laughs> mm. Is anybody listening to me? Yes, preacher. And so, shh. the devil is determined more, more than ever to win the battle. In his final preparation for the final conflict, he is accompanied by the beast of Revelation 13, who is attached to the woman of Revelation 17. Tell us, preacher. You all listen to me tonight. The woman of Revelation 12, ladies and gentlemen, defeats him, but he's still fighting. Hmm. And the Bible makes it clear Jordan will be defeated by symbols of weakness. Mm, yes, Peter. The woman will lick him, and the blood of the Lamb will lick him. Love will conquer force. Force will melt in the presence of. 
Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. Let's go, please. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Yes, sweet. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now follow me here tonight. Follow me here. Please tell me Jesus, please. The word wonder or sign here used for woman suggests that this was not a literal woman but a symbol. But a what? Symbol. Please. The twelve stars signifies the twelve stars signify the twelve tribes of Israel. The sun and moon represents the light of the gospel. That's why as Christians we must let our light shine. The Bible says in verse 2, Revelation verse 3, I beg your pardon, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3, what it says here? And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. Now don't miss it, all this thing appears in, in heaven. Now the red, red is the color of bloodshed and oppression. Hmm. The seven heads represent kingdoms, and the ten horns, Yes, preacher. We're going to come back there. You want to listen to me tonight? The Bible says in verse 4. Come on, read verse 4. Everybody, what it says? And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Which child did the devil want to destroy? Jesus. Not true? Yes, preacher. Yes, man. When the wise man came to Herod, he said, if you find a child, let me know. They found the child, but the Holy Ghost said to them, you don't go back the way to Howard, to Herod, you go another way. Yes, and he heard that he went and he killed every boy child. Hmm. But watch it, if God wants to protect you, nobody can kill you, man. Yes, preacher, hallelujah. But what this shows is the great hostility of the serpent towards hmm. the woman and the enmity, as Genesis 3.15 talks about. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Which, come on, somebody talk to me on this. Yes, preacher, hallelujah. The Bible says in verse 5, what verse 5 says, Pastor? And she brought forth a man child, yes, sweet. who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now this has to talk about Jesus, not true? Yes. Who was caught up? Jesus. Jesus. She brought forth a man child. Hmm. The Bible says in Acts chapter, Acts, put it here please, Acts chapter 1 and verse 9, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Yes, Talks about Jesus. And when you read Revelation, it goes back and forth from, 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 from literal to symbolic, literal to symbolic. We hmm. just have the symbolic, something take place in heaven, now we have the literal about, about the child that went up to heaven. Yes, preacher. That's why you have to understand it. Come on, somebody say amen. Hallelujah. And I want you to note that John's interest is not in the human Jesus, but the exalted Christ who is able to rescue his people. Amen. Now follow me here. After his ascension to heaven, the church comes under severe attack. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 6, come on, read everybody what it says. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Where she hath a place prepared of God. Yes, please. That they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Now the scene is similar to Israel's escape from the Egyptian to the wilderness where God cared for them. The wilderness spoke of divine protection and intimate fellowship. And hear me here tonight, my friends from Tortola. God cares. God's care of the church in the wilderness as shows us this. Put it on the screen, my sister. No matter how fierce the trials are, God is what? Watching over him. And you all talk the thing, the man. God is what? Watching over And his God church. will sustain his people. So when you saw one set of footprint in the sand, it was God who was carrying you. Hallelujah. God will carry his church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh. Hmm. And please note that God fed the church for 1,260 years. 60 years of persecution. When they persecuted people just to keep in the truth. It will come again. Not true? Yes, preacher. It will come again. And the weaklings will leave. Hmm. But those who are grounded will stay. Hallelujah. And let me tell you people something. A lot of those who are grounded are those who will come in from the outside. Yes, preacher. Tell us about it. You hear me? I baptize Pentecostals, Baptists, Catholic, Gangliacans. Hmm. And when they understand the importance of God's message, man, they are solid. Hmm. Yes, preacher. Solid like a rock. 
Hmm. I remember I had a crucial in Dominica. I had so much, so many stories. And, and the same priest that I talked to you who threw the water at me, he was having a crusade. So when I have service on Sabbath, he has he having service on Sabbath. Hmm. But I struggle. What? Nobody under the tent. Tent empty. Then one Friday night I was preaching on dreams and he sent one of his acolytes to spy to see who was under the tent. But that night, like the sermon captivated the brother. Yes. Hmm. And so when I got back to my home, he came to me and he said, can I talk to you? I said, sure. He said, well, I'm from the Catholic Church. The priest sent me at the tent tonight. But I was there, I heard you preach about dreams. I have a dream, can you interpret it? I said, sure. You tell me the dream, I'll give you the interpretation thereof. Yes, preacher. And so he said, Pastor, I dreamt I was in the river. Hmm. And I saw a piece of rope. And the rope was black. And then the black rope turned white. And when the rope turned white, he called the name of the person. This person was standing in the river. He said, can you interpret that? I said, sure. Water represents baptism. The black rope represents sin. The fact that it turns white represents the righteousness of Christ. And the person who was in the water was there to witness your baptism. Hallelujah! Then I told him, you go home. And if the Lord give you a good dream, come under the tent. Hmm. Yeah, no, I forgot about Mr. Lee. I preach in the Sabbath, preach and making the appeal. When I looked, I see 40, 50 people at the altar. And boy, you're excited because you're struggling all week. Then when I look, I saw the man coming up here. I said, Papa, man. <laughs> yeah, last. What do you want? He came up. I gave the vows and he answered, everyone. Hmm. No, if you're from Dominica, I was having a crusade in a place called Anzime. Anybody from Dominica? Yeah. Anzime is here and the beach is right there. You just have to go over the road. Yeah. So after the vows, I went now because I was the district pastor to put on my gown to baptize the, guy, the people. While I'm in the back, he came here and he said, Pastor, I did not see the sea. I saw the river. So I said, buddy, it doesn't matter river or sea as long as it's water. He said, no, 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 no. I saw river. Now, Dominica has 365 rivers. And where I was there in Anz de May, they had about seven rivers around. I didn't want him to get away. So I called a deacon and an usher. I jumped into my car. I tell them, put him in the pickup. And so we drove to a place, a river called Hampstead. Yes. You know Hampstead? Yes. Hampstead is a river you can drive in and wash down your car. Yes. So when I got there, I saw a fella in the river with his pickup, train stones in the pickup. But me not study, mister. I went to baptize the guy. And Dominicans are very obedient. When I got there, they were bathing. And I said, Pastor, going to have a baptism? They said, yes, Pastor. And they went and they sat on the stone. While I'm there waiting on him, the ushers are bringing him. As soon as he comes to the edge of the river, he started. I said, what are you trembling for? So I said, bring him, bring him. When he came to me, you were still trembling. But you don't ask questions before. You ask them. <laughs> yes, preacher. I took him and I baptized him. When he came back up, he stopped trembling. So I said, why were you trembling? He said, Pastor, the man I saw in my dream, look him there. Amen. You can't fight the truth. Truth is like a cock. You keep it down long, 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 mm -hmm. long, long. As soon as you let it go, what happens? He oh, no. threw water on me. Now I take what you have. Is anybody listening to me? Yes, preacher. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, let me stay here. The most dangerous time for the church is not when she's persecuted, it is when she's prosperous. Hmm. And at ease. Hmm. And have all the money. And yes, have all the preacher. food. Oh, we don't need anything. We can buy flat screen. Hmm. We can buy Yamaha MOA. Hmm. We can buy what we want. We have projectors. That's the most dangerous time of this for the church. Is anybody listening to me? Tell us about when the preacher. church is persecuted, man, the church knows how to ride, rise, because our champion is not dead. He's alive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now let us look at the other woman and see a compelling contrast. Bible says in Revelation 17 and verse 1. Come on, everybody. What it says here? And there came one of the seven angels, yes, which had the seven veils, 
and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great war that sitteth upon many waters. The judgment of the great what? Whore. Whore in prophecy is a who? Whore in prophecy, well a whore is a woman, and woman represents the what? God's church. And it says she sitteth upon many waters. Waters and waters in prophecy represent people. So she has plenty people. Yes, preacher. But God will not abandon his Sabbath because the majority keeps up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God will stand by the truth. Amen. Even if, even if eight more people got to go in the ark, God will stand by the truth. Hallelujah. Because God is not a liar. Are you listening to me? Amen. Yes, preacher. Yes. And Revelation tells us what this whole representation of. Put it, put it. Revelation 17, 8. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Hmm. In the United Nations, Italy is represented as a nation. That's the Vatican. That's in Italy. And the Vatican is also represented as a, as a nation. So that you have two nations at the United Nations, where it should be one. So the Bible talks about the woman, and the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which which, which what? Reign over the what? kings of the earth. Reign not over the kings of the earth. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there must be some connection. Let's read Revelation chapter 17 and verse 3. Come on, Pastor. What it says, everybody. What it says? So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And so watch it, watch me here. The connection is the seven heads and ten horns. Yeah. Hmm. This woman has how many heads? Seven heads. And how many horns? Seven horns. But let's read some more. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 1. What it says here? Yes. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, yes, sweet. and saw a beast uh -huh. rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. So watch it, the woman has seven heads and ten horns, and the beast has what? So there's a connection. Mm, yes, preacher. I said there's what? A connection. And so watch this, watch this now. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 2. Come on, read what it says here. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. <gasps> so the thing changed now from a woman to a him. Mm, the yes, dragon preacher. gave him his power, his what? Power. The dragon also gave him his seat and the dragon gave him great authority. So watch me here today. Forget about the street, let's go on. Christ was given authority from the Father, but the beast is given authority from the dragon. Hmm. So the false church is directed by the dragon. Is anybody listening to me? Here? My Lord, this thing is serious. You know? Two women. Which one is yours? I know which one is mine. Now let's read about this dragon power. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 4. Read on please. What it says here? And the woman was arrayed in purple and yes, scarlet please. color, uh -huh. and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a gold cup in her hand, full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. And so notice, she was arrayed in purple and scarlet and decked with what? Gold. Gold. God shoot church and not wear drill. Hmm, tell us about it, preacher. The woman of drill is a sign of idolatry. Are you hmm. listening to me? Amen. God give you an air, not to put in any earrings. He said, if you have an air to hell, hallelujah. Yeah. 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 And if I got a preacher on drill, you'll be shocked in it. Hmm. Because after Moses came up the mountain, and these people took the jewelry and made an idol, God got so angry. God said unto Moses, you go and tell your, your people, preacher. So this woman is arrayed in purple and scarlet and she has a golden cup. I used to be an altar boy, you know, you know the golden cup? Hmm. <laughs> and in my days when we give him the, the cup with the wine, he gives everybody a little drink and wipe it with a towel. Not true? Yes. Yeah. And then when he's finished, he... Hmm. The golden cup, it says, in her hand, full of abomination and the filthiness of her fornication, preacher. But I want to look a little bit at the colors here tonight. It seems that she has purple and scarlet. And when you read Exodus, I think it's Exodus 15, there about the sanctuary, the sanctuary of God has purple, scarlet, but it also has blue. Blue, preacher. 
So as far as this text is concerned, this woman is missing a color. Missing a what? Color. Why? Why? The Bible has the answer. The Bible says here in Numbers, put it here please. Numbers chapter 15, 37, 38. Come on pastor, what it says here? And the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, Yes please. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments uh -huh. throughout their generation. Yes please. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. A ribbon of what? Blue. Blue. So the, the people of God must have on a gown and below her must be a ribbon of? Blue. That is why the woman, when she touched Jesus, she didn't touch the, hmm. the hand or the way. She touched the hem of his garment. Because blue represents obedience. Oh, and when she, she touched stopped. obedience, the Bible says straight away. No, she was healed. No, what does the blue represent? The Bible says in verse 39, put it here. The Bible says, and it shall be unto you for a what? Pray that you may look upon it and remember what? All the commandments of the Lord and do them. But the false church does not keep commandments. So she does not have blue. What she has is purple and scarlet. Tell us about it, preacher. Is anybody on the Yes, preacher. Yes, preacher. Mm. The last verse about this dragon power and upon our forehead was written. Put it now. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of hell and abominations of the earth. Hmm. Is anybody there? And I know I can preach about it. I was a Catholic and altar boy. I left the church because I went to practice some mass and the priest was drunk. I was an Anglican, I told you before, I'll tell you again. Carnival de Back Street, he has a Heineken beer in his hand. I left the Anglican church and I went to a place called Victoria Park. A guy was preaching in Shamba, a big red fella. And that guy got me so scared the night. In fact, that night, Pastor Royston, he healed a woman. She could not talk and he had the woman say, Jesus, I love you. Listen, man, every hair on my skin rose up. When he made the, when he made the call for baptism, I went up. Next Sunday, I got baptized. After I got baptized the next Sunday in the New Testament Church of God, they brought me to the altar. The, the pastor's name was one mother prior. And they prayed on everybody's head. And everybody else spoke in tongues except me. <laughs> mother prior was sitting on a high stool. So she took a piece of stick and she said, you, come. When I got to her feet, she took the stick. Repent, repent, repent. Mercy preacher. Next Sunday we were in church and they brought us to the altar and they laid hands on us. I didn't want anybody to tell me to repent. So I shouted, Hakkalama Shandalama. And they said, oh, he got the spirit, he got the spirit. Some of you prophesying, but you need to repent. Is anybody listening to me? Yes, teacher. Because hear me. In the church there was a prophetess named Rosie. Who prophesied that I will get 80 in biology? <laughs> I was the dunces's biology. <laughs> <laughs> I was the dunces's when it comes to biology. And then you know got 50. I looked at and I said, I know you lie. <laughs> but when I got my results, I got 80. I said, what? When I go to church, if Rosie sits there, I will sit here. I was afraid of the girl. What's pretty? Three months after. I saw Rosie with Big Belly. And she's not married. But I left the church. I had a new testament. I walked through Coco Field from Green Hill to Kingston Park. And I ripped that Bible and leaf by it. The next year I was singing Calypso. You keep coming, I'll tell you how I came by here. Is anybody listening to me? Hmm. So you hear me preach, I can preach. I've been there. Come on, somebody say. Hallelujah. And so hear me here, hear me here. Babylon is a cryptic name for end time worldwide religious confederacy. They have different names, but they worship on the same day. They preach different things, but they worship on a day that the Bible never endorses. Tell us about the preacher. I think this don't be afraid to say it because right is right and wrong is wrong. Is anybody listening to me? Yes, preacher. In Barbados, we baptized over 300 persons from the People's Cathedral. 
understand the past today. Oh, was really? And they were mad, you know? So they brought in a bad preacher from Jamaica. Chris Aston. Understand that he has a show. God bless his soul. And boy, these Adventists say, Pastor, let's go. Say, me, I'm not going there. That is too much confusion. But they insisted and they insisted and so I went along. I had on a jeans, pants, a jersey, a slip and a hat. And boy, the church was filled. If you see people, even some of those you baptized came back to hear what the guy had to say. And he went on making his statement, talking about Greek and technon and all kind of foolishness. He was even saying things that shouldn't be said a term of, in, to, to, as far as Greek is concerned. He forgot a Greek scholar was in the audience. <laughs> then he started talking about the church and Ellen G. White. Let me tell you something. Ellen G. White is not the Virgin Mary of this church. No, no preacher. Ellen G. White is just a member just like you and me. Yes, preacher. But God gave her the special gift of prophecy. Come Hallelujah. On. She was a sinner. That's why she died in 1950. That's right. But because of the gift the Lord gave the woman, the woman wrote some books. <laughs> and when you read them, they don't make you worse off. They make you better off. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some of you take them and use it out of context. Yes, preacher. Speak about it. But we are not saved by Ellen G. White. We are saved by grace. When you all say the thing, the man, we are saved by grace. When you all finish, we are saved by grace. And Jesus Christ. Amen. But when he was finished, he asked folks to come up in the line to ask Christians. And if you see Adventists in the line, me, I stay in my seat, we? But there was a guy who went up there, Pastor, who I baptized two months ago. And he asked a question about the new commandment. He did not ask this question well. He was out of place in asking the question. And the guy told him, if you don't know what to ask, go and ask your pastor. Hmm. Who tell he? <laughs> I moved from my seat and I walked past everybody in the line right up to the front. I said, good night, Pastor. I'm Claudius Morgan from St. Vincent. And I came here to ask you one question and to refute what you have said on the covenant. He said, what is the question? I said, sir, can you show me in this Bible where I must keep Sunday? Hmm. He won't answer. He said, what answer you want? I said, can you show me there where I must keep Sunday? He didn't answer. I turned to the people, I said, he cannot show me because it's not. Hmm. I said to him, let me talk to you about the covenant. I said, I said, my friend, I'm on Sinai, there were two covenants. And then I told him, a covenant in the Greek language is a, is a promise and a will. Hmm. Before the person dies, it is a promise. After the person dies, it is a will. He stopped me. He said, what kind of scholar are you? Don't show me that the Old Testament is Hebrew and not Greek. I said, sir, haven't you got a Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Old Testament? Oh, yes, preacher. When I said that home, Williams came to the mic. Oh, let us not discuss anymore. Let us stand and sing Amazing Grace. <laughs> Ask all the preachers in Cockton. Tell them to show you this battle where we must keep. <laughs> And this confederacy is made up of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Put it here, and get ready for the anointing elders. Revelation 16, 13, and 14. What is this here, Pastor? And I saw three on me, spirit, yes, sir. like frog, come out of the mouth of the dragon. Yes, sir. And out of the mouth of the beast. Yes, sir. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. So what? Three on me, spirit, like what? Frog, come out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and the what? Prophet. So God has a trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Satan wants Trinity to drag and be sent. Prophet. False prophet. They don't see what they do on TV. Come, 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 boy. Come, come. Come, boy, I call you. Come, city, come, come. Boy, come fast. Hmm. You see what they do? Come, come on, get everybody. Let's see. Smithy, stand up here. Come, come. That's what they do on TV. Don't know what I'm saying, come to bed in here. Come on, Mr. Peter. 
And you tell him, oh, whatever, oh, whatever. And the Holy Ghost touched me, whatever. And I had a pain in the side, all the pain is gone. Don't you think you should give God praise? Amen. Don't you think you should tell the guy, lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus? Amen. Oh, what he does? Come on, go down, buddy. Somebody go down, boy. Somebody go down. Go down, go down. Put him down, put him down. Put him down. And he puts him down. But ladies and gentlemen, watch me here. When you read the Bible, God never pushed down anybody. Why is down here? Anybody that God heals, God tell them to get up. You're a false prophet. Mm, false prophet teacher. All of them on TV speaking in tongues, you can't understand a thing. Mm, the Bible says it. if you speak in a tongue, you must have an interpreter. Yeah. If you don't have an interpreter, you yeah. must shoot them in the church. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Amen. Yes, teacher. Speak the truth. Mm. Speak the word. The Bible says in verse 14, for they are the spirits of what? Devils! Walking miracles. Let's skip over and bring this thing to us. You cannot have both women. You have to choose one. You choose the pure one, then Christ is your leader. Yes. You choose the pure one, then the gates of hell can't touch you. Tell us, preacher. You choose the pure one, then on that day, your journey to heaven, you'll journey to heaven and live in your mansion. Yes, preacher. Hallelujah. You choose the pure one, then victory is assured. Yes, preacher. Come on, somebody say. Hallelujah. And it's not a popularity contest. No, preacher. The hardest thing to accept is to become Adventist. <laughs> yes, preacher. If you accept anything else, nobody says anything. But no. when you're Adventist girl, you know what you're doing? True. Am I speaking the truth? Yes, yes preacher. Yes. Hallelujah. I would sing Calypso. Woman in my house like, peace. My mother, that's my son. Yeah. One woman Tuesday, one Wednesday, that's my son. Yeah. But then I decided to become a seven yeah. My mother went on the bank. You ever hear of Incension, woman body? Yeah. Hey! 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 I came up in a church. <laughs> now we go hard come seven days. But there comes a time in life when you have to make your decision for yourself. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! God doesn't call a family, but if he does, he calls them one at a time. One. Is anybody listening to me? Yes, preacher. I hope you are. You choose the whole, the dragon is your leader. Hmm, mercy, preacher. Who's your leader? The dragon. You choose the whole, hell's fire will be your punishment. Mercy. You choose the whole, then death is assured. Mercy. You choose the whole, you will prosper for a time. But ladies and gentlemen, your end will be better. Yes, we shall. Put it. All, all over the slides, you should have seen me do it. Put it in. Two women. Which one is yours? Which one? I know which one is mine. You see this one? This one is mine. Here, I felt this look at her. Do you see she removed that and put pencil? No, preacher. No, preacher. Tell us about it. You see she stick on anything here? No, preacher. You see the lips look red? No, natural, preacher. Natural beauty. Tell us about it. Oh, somebody talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. You look, you see any cleavers here? No, yeah, you see any memory glands? No, put your cover. Well, cover. Speak about it. Because she's the true church, ladies and gentlemen, on her head is a, is a, is a cross. Hallelujah. And on her feet are the sun and the moon. Hallelujah. It says that the true church must let their light shine. Hallelujah. Well, Hallelujah. Somebody talk to me. Amen. Amen. Speak the word. Yes, teacher. Two women. Which one is yours? 
Phil. I don't know which one is that. One is the heart of the Church of Compromise. Mm. I close it now. Get ready, others. I was preaching in Jamaica. And this Tuesday night, this pastor came to the tent. Can't remember her first name, but she was Pastor Stevens. It was a lady. And she came because I she heard the sermon announced how to look cold when you see one. Hmm. But that night I changed the sermon to how who are you covenant Christians? Oh. And went into Galatians with Hagar and Sarah. Went into the covenants. Maybe I'll preach it here. I preach it in St. Croix. Yes, preacher. When I made the appeal, she came to the altar. After the service, she said, Can I see you? Fine. She said she wants to talk to me, so I invited her to come the next day. She came the next day with a long shopping list. <laughs> There were 42 questions. The last question on the list, the Sabbath was made for the Jews. I turned to Acts 9, 13, verses 42 to 44, and I showed her where the Sabbath was not only for the Jews, but for the Gentiles. Hallelujah! When she saw it, she fell on her knees, and I said, don't do that, Sister Stevens, don't do that. She planned to get baptized the next time. She said, I have to go and talk to my superintendent because I'm an ordained minister, or whatever the case is. We did not see her after. The Sabbath, the 10th fit, because everybody heard this pastor get him. Mary, that I preached the sermon. I preached the sermon, gave the vows. She was not there. Those of you from Jamaica know in Kingston, they have no beaches. We have to go to Port Moore, aren't you? Yes. So I went in the back to change. While I'm changing, the door opened. And she came in. Smelling of onion, garlic, sand. So I knew she was in the kitchen. And she came in. Last I don't know what to do. I am so confused and whatever. And I looked at her and I said, Sister Stevens, I have two gowns. A white and a green. Which one you want? <laughs> she said, give me the white pasta. Oh, yeah. I put it in my car. Yeah. She didn't get it away. Yes. <laughs> the pastor from Kingston to Port is an hour something. I have to smell that garlic all the way. <laughs> but all for the sake of the cross. Yes. <laughs> when we got to the beach, they had just yellow and green dogs. No white, but she said she wanted it. Yes. White. So I called Pastor Cotterell, the president of the conference, and I said, Pastor, you have to get me a white dog even if you have to buy it. Yes. For half an hour when I looked, she was dressed in white. Ah, Over 300 people getting back. Everybody in green and yellow. But Sister sister Stevens in? Yes. <laughs> there were 12 of us baptizing in the, in the sea. When she came in the sea, I stopped everybody. I said, we baptizing her alone. 12 of us held. You know I got to be in the middle. <laughs> so I said, pastors, you don't pull. Just wait on me. Just put your head. And so I put her down and I held her down with law. <laughs> And I look at her face to make sure I see bubbles. <laughs> when I saw the bubbles and I brought her, when she came up, she talked. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All of your commandments. Amen. Let me tell you something, man. When you are not, when you are not obedient to Christ, keeping his commandments, there's a weight on your shoulder. There's a burden on your back. But when you when you keep God's truth, that burden is released. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. 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 Yes.